ang TNC po ay nakikiisa sa sambayan ng Pilipino para sa isang mapayapang bagong Pasko. Ang bagong Pasko ay simbolo ng bagong pag-asa. Ito ay isang pagkakataon upang ating mapagnilayan ang mga kaganapan sa ating buhay. Ang diwa ng bagong Pasko ay hindi mararamdaman sa mga palamuti o karangyaan sa ating kapanigiran, kundi sa alam ng pag-ibig sa ating mga dibdib. Lahat tayo ay nakaranas ng hirap nitong taon na to. Dahil sa pandemya, nawalan tayo ng oportunidad. Kahit na anong mangyari, pinipilit pa din natin makapagbigay ng saya sa iba. Yan ang diwa ng bagong Pasko. Para sa akin, ang bagong Pasko ay hindi concerned sa handaan o sa mga regalo. Sharing, giving, taking care of each other. Sana simula ngayong bagong Pasko, ganun na lahat tayo. Maraming salamat po sa new channel, Maligayang Pasko. Christmas is always a reminder to have an attitude of gratitude. And that means sharing the love and appreciating everything that matters to you. Christmas is a celebration of life. And let us all be grateful that we are enjoying God's gift of life. Ang bagong Pasko ay simple at payak. Nakasentro sa ating pamilya at sa ating Panginoon. I want to remind everyone that we should treasure the connection that we have. We have our friends our family, and of course, Jesus Christ. Para sa akin, ang diwa ng Pasko hindi nagbabago pa. Ito ay panahon ng pagmamahalan, pag-iibigan. Walang makakatalo sa pagmamahal na binigay sa atin ng Panginoon. Maraming salamat po, The New Channel, Maligayang Pasko. diwa ng bagong Pasko ay hindi lang paghahangad ng mga regalo o mga bagong bagay. Ito ay ang pagpapahalaga sa mga bagay na meron na tayo at ang matutunang ibahagi ito sa mga nangangailangan. Amin salamat ko sa new channel! Dapat din natin tandaan ang totoong diwa ng Pasko, si Kristo Jesus. Noon, ngayon, at magpakailanman. Ang bagong Pasko para kanako, Dili ang masigarbong pang sa ulo, kundi ang pag-ambit o ginabang sa mga taong mas nang inahangla ng panahon sa pandemya. Ang diwa ng bagong Pasko ay ang pag-iingat sa ating mga sarili, pagiging ligtas sa kapamakan, at pagpapabuti sa ating kalusugan. Maraming salamat po, The New Channel, Maligayang Pasko. Maraming salamat, The New Channel, Maligayang Pasko. Ngayong bagong Pasko, isa buhay natin at maging saksi what does the new Christmas mean to me? It means reconnecting. Reconnecting with the people you love, the people you care about, the people you have not spoken with in a long time that always made you happy. We should never forget. Christ is still the reason for the season. for us is focusing on the basic unit of society which is your family and virtual togetherness with friends and brothers. And of course, sharing your blessings to others in need. Celebrate Christmas with full of gratitude. Ang Pasko ay tungkol sa pagmamahal mo sa pamilya mo at pagiging mabuti sa kapwa. Christmas is the season of giving but you cannot give if your hands are closed. So open your hands and your hearts and give. And your open hands will receive so much more. Christmas is the season of giving. It is best spent with our families. But let us not also forget that this is the celebration of the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ. Para sa akin, ang diwa ng bagong Pasko ay ang pagkakaroon ng mas madaming oras para sa ating mga pamilya. Maraming salamat na new channel ng Gaya Pasko! Christmas is always about sharing and caring, loving ourselves, and loving others. Ang bagong Pasko para sa akin, malayo man tayo sa isa't isa, ang pagmamahal ay atin pa rin maipadarama. Maligayang maligayang Pasko po at manigong bagong taon sa inyong lahat.
The views, opinions, and insights expressed in the following show are those of the hosts, producers, guests, and viewers. 
they do not necessarily reflect the position of the channel. Viewer discretion is advised. Welcome to the new channel. We're here to help you see the new you. You're watching The Family Business with Nato Agbayan. Good afternoon. Welcome back. You're still watching The Family Business with Nato Agbayani on TNC. Uh, today, we have a great topic for you. Uh, this is the topic about families who have changed the course of history. And today, we feature to you the De Villa family. Um, we have with us Anna De Villa Singson. And of course, later, we will have uh, Ambassador Henrietta De Villa. So without any further ado, let's have Anna with us uh, to join us in the studio. Hi, Nata. Sing hi also to all your viewers, and thanks for having me here. And Mom, of course, will be joining later. Yes, good afternoon. So, uh, Anna, I won't, I won't uh, keep, uh, I, I won't keep you. So, I know you have a, another engagement later, but let me ask you that before you joined your mom with the PPCRB, I know you were in the corporate world. I think yes, we were I both in that. marketing, but I think you're a lot younger than me. <laughs> so I anyway, that is true. yeah, because uh, my boss was like Boy Martires in Smart, so that was in the '90s. So oh, I was in the that. telco early. So let, tell tell us about your corporate uh, journey. My corporate journey, which was like maybe a decade or more ago, I started when I graduated from Ateneo. I was I started as a trainee in Unilever, but worked myself up. I became marketing manager. At the time, if you were in detergents, it was a hardcore of Unilever. So I was called the Beretta Queen of Unilever at the time. Um, and they assigned me to Sydney, Australia for a while. Um, they said it was a prize for good work. I think they were just sending me away. After that, I moved to Avon. I had responsibilities not only in the Philippines, but also in Asia. I was a marketing manager for, for cosmetics, fragrances, and toiletries, which was 80% of the Avon Philippines business at the time. And afterwards, I went to Globe. Globe was my 24-7 job because, as you know, Bo, uh, having been in telco yourself, it was a dog-eat-dog -dog business at the time when everybody was just cutting their teeth in mobile cellular business. So I was a vice president for um, corporate marketing and also for cellular marketing. I launched Touch Mobile. I don't know if you ever used Touch Mobile, but I launched of that. Of course. Was <laughs> yes, yes, that's me. Yeah. Of course. And then um, I uh, did a short stint as vice president for sales and marketing of Wyatt, after which I decided to retire because the kids were not getting any younger. And I felt that I had given enough time to the corporate world, time for my family. I see. So um, that was quite a solid, ex I mean, solid uh, stint with the okay. corporate. Yes. Yeah. yes. 10 years. And then very high pressure jobs, Unilever, very A1. High pressure jobs. Uh, yes, Globe, yes. Telco, yes. Uh, Pharma, oh my. So yeah. how what was your beauty regimen? How how have you <laughs> how have you managed to keep uh, looking so young and fresh even <laughs> with all those very stressful jobs? Uh, the, at the time, my gosh, how did I keep saying it wasn't easy because at the time I was also starting I was a young mother at the time. I was starting my family, especially when I was in when I was in Avon. Um, I had given birth to my first son. I was newly married. Um, it was really, really difficult. Sometimes I'd find myself coming home at 2 a.m. And um, just, to make, just to keep sane, I, was, I would bake. I know you'd find it very strange, but I would bake at 2 a.m. until 4 a.m. sometimes because 
baking was my outlet. It was my creative outlet. And when I was baking and I knew I was going to cook something for my husband and my children to try, even when I was out of the house later on, that was my, that was my sanity check. I'd also read a lot. I'd read, read, read. Whenever I had free time, I would read and that would immediately calm me down. And of course, my young children, my young children and my husband, they were the source of my strength. Because if you think of it, that's the reason I embarked in the corporate um, endeavor anyway, because it was for them also. Yeah, so it was quite a shift. No, so I think that was your mom uh, got involved with PPCRB in 1991. The first oh, time I met her, yeah. diba? that was 1991. Then the first time I met her was in the National Peace Conference. I was a young uh, government career officer and uh, I attended this National Peace Conference organized by their, their yes. group. Then I met her Fast forward when I was already CEO of uh, Global Tronics, so, yes. where we helped uh, PPCRB, right? Yes. So how did you, I mean, can you tell us about the shift and then why you went into, okay. into this, into the advocacy? Okay, actually, um, PPCRB started actually in the 1980s, no, not in the 1990s. Um, oh, I see. Yeah, it started in the 1980s. And mom actually founded that along with um, His Eminence Jaime Cardinal Sin and Heidi Orak. They put it together because they were saying that at the time there were, they, they called it the three Gs, guns, goons, and gold. They said politics was dominated by those three Gs. And Cardinal wanted to do something about it, Cardinal Sin. And he called in uh, Commissioner Yorak. She was a commissioner at Comelec Commissioner, Commissioner Heidi Yorak, and my mom, who was the head of not just Mother Butler, but also several other big religious organizations. And he asked her to put together a lay organization. He said the private citizens should do their job. They should help the government, should help the government clean up. So that's how PPCRB was born. And I remember in 1983, it was actually the first election that PPCRB participated in, wherein Comelec had given accreditation for PPCRB, PPCRB to do voters education and poll watching. At the time, we didn't yet do um, the quick count, which we did later on when we worked with you already in Global Tronics. So it was just poll watching and voters education. And I remember seeing my mom getting so involved that one day I just started my work in Unilever at the time. I was a trainee. And I was said to her mom, um, I started in the corporate world, but you keep talking about this and I just want to help. Can you give me a small role? Because I'm just starting in my job. So I just really need a tiny little role because all my time is really spent in Unilever um, as a trainee and ours there were really long and I was still establishing myself. So she said, okay, I'll tell my secretary to call you and she's going to give you a tiny little job. I said, tiny mom, tiny. Her secretary calls me just two hours after and she says, okay, your mom's assignment for you is you're going to take care of Operation Quick Count in Manila. So I was sort of dumbfounded that because I just wow. my chair. Tiny, yeah. I asked for a tiny job. So I said, tiny. So I called my mother right away. I said, I don't care what she's doing. Connect me to my mom. I said, mom, I asked for tiny. And I will never forget what my mother said. And it's something that my mother lives by and actually advocates all the time. She said, tiny or small is always relative. She goes, I didn't give you the Philippines. I didn't even give you NCR. I just gave you Metro Manila. That's tiny. She goes, besides, she repeated, tiny is relative. And tiny is as big or as small as a person who makes it happen. And you know, when my mom starts talking wow. that way, there's, there's no backing out. So I asked her, okay, do I have funds for this? She goes, when I told you're in charge, you have to take care of everything. I go, where do I get my volunteers? And she said, you have to take care of that too. So that was my that was my initiation. Oh my. That was my, tiny, yeah. All right. That was my initiation into the tiny world of PPCRV. I recruited all my best friends, and I was so scared because at those times, Makati poll, polling centers, it was Manuel Pae at that time. Um, Makati right, polling right. centers which were under me because I was Metro Manila, were hot spots. And since I was recruiting all my best friends, they were all, all over Makati. And I was like, oh my gosh, if something happens to these people. I, I, I went to different parishes um, um, throughout Metro Manila, recruiting people. And then we tied up with some priests because I figured that if the priests accompanied the, um, 
the the volunteers who are going to do the quick count for the first time, nobody was going to harass them. And, and that was a good strategy. It really, really worked. It was just a little bit um, nerve wracking because I asked for something tiny and I think I got something that was really rather large. But, you know, mom is right. In the scheme of things, tiny is what you make it. It happened. We were able to do Operation Quick Count. And I was True. so happy because um, they were broadcasting our results over over the radio and over yeah over over several radio stations because we tied up with some radio stations. It felt really, really good when they were saying, this is brought to you by Operation Quick Count of PPCRV. And I knew that was me in Metro Melala. So that was a source of, of a lot of pride for me, but also a lot of stress and a lot of tension. And I think that is one story that, that very well defines my mother, not just me, but even more my mother, because she was in charge of the entire met the entire Philippines while she gave me that tiny segment of Metro Manila. Well, uh, that's very interesting because, you know, uh, from corporate to volunteer work and, uh, you know, our topic today is families who have changed the course of history and uh, how many elections have passed uh, and now it's automated now we don't know what's going to happen in 2022 because of the pandemic so i i mean uh literally you have changed the course of history and tell us more about the those moments or those highlights where you felt that uh, uh, you could say to yourself all right i, I think i contributed a tiny <laughs> a tiny portion of yeah, a tiny portion of uh, my 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 life, or even even as a family, because I I understand that all your sisters were involved in the. Both in, in all this she was very involved. Marie Cora was also involved. My other sister is in Bacolod, but she was very involved in the Bacolod chapter also. And my brothers were always in the command center. Um, exactly. We so it's really a uh, Devilia Incorporated. It takes a village. <laughs> I mean, yeah. A village. Diva something yeah. like this happen that you were saying was there any point in time where i thought i was changing history um when you're actually it's history now it's automated and the ppcrv command center has become the the bailiwick of the automated elections that's where people go it's the it's the vote that they count that they that people trust that people look at but it wasn't that in the beginning because in the beginning we were we were um very new to to what you call the quick count, no? to, to the verification of the vote. That happened in the automated election. So there was no any aha moment or hallelujah moment or eureka moment even, wherein I felt, hey, I'm doing something large in history. It's only in hindsight that I see, oh my gosh, we did make a difference. And I'm so very, very privileged to have been given a chance to be a part of it. I think the most historic moment for us, for me, um, I think even for my mom and for PPCRV for sure was when we went, we were given our third mandate because PPCRV has been, um, has been in existence since October, but we were only asked to do voters education and poll watching. But when elections turned automated, we were given the third mandate of doing the quick count or the verification, the nat nationwide, not just Manila, nationwide verification of the vote. And I remember I was retired at the time already. And I said, mom, I have more time now. And frankly, I, my mom is such a busy person. It was really the only way I could <laughs> probably connect with my mom even more was, was to join her PPCRV. So I right. said, mom, I have a little more time now. Can you please um, give me some responsibilities? It is the same story as the tiny story. She said, OK, oh you're going to put up. Are you ready for this, Nava? She said, you're going to put up the PPCRV command center. I said, what? What is a PPCRV command center? She goes, a command center is a center where everything is going to happen. We're going to have computers. We're going to have screens. We're going to have a lot of people who will be counting the vote. The, um, the election returns will come here, and then we're going to broadcast it so everybody sees that um, the vote is being counted by um, a nonpartisan group, by a civilian nonpartisan group. And I asked the same usual questions again, Nato. Mom, I don't know anything about the automated election center, uh, about automated elections. She goes, it's the first time for everybody. Do your research. 
And then I said, do we have funds? No, get donors. I said, we have recruits. She goes, that we have. We have the volunteers of PPCRV in the parishes all throughout Manila. And even in Cavite, they're going to come in to help. And even the priests and some schools. So I said, funds? She goes, none. Take care of it. So it was the same story again, Nato. But this time, it was a PPCRV command center. But you know, when you dream big um, and you're doing things that are for the right reasons, everything will come into place. I believe that. And remember, we are, PPCRV is a civilian group. It's a lay group. But it's very, very much, um, the spirit runs through it because it's the child of the church. PPCRV is actually the child of the church. So it's very spiritual. And when there's faith, and there was a lot of faith, because at that time, we were running on faith because we, did not, we didn't have resources, we didn't have a command center, we didn't know what we were going to do, we didn't even know what automated elections were. And I was running on faith. I was running on belief that this was the right thing to do because PPCRV had been counting the vote, as I said, since, 19, since the 1980s, and we saw all the shenanigans in the manual counting. We saw that um, there was a lot of manipulation, and we said, maybe, maybe this is the answer. We didn't know at the time. The jury was out. So I was sent out to do research on automated elections. Uh, I spoke to Smartmatic, who was a vendor, who was already the chosen vendor at the time. I asked for research. I asked for I asked him to give me all the reference materials. And I did research like I was back in school. I researched everything. I looked at country templ templates of different countries, not just Smartmatic templates, but all the possible templates of automated elections that I could find because we had to put up. A command center right and when i thought i understood a little bit about automated elections we started making um we started making um, um voters paraphernalia it was Im very important voters education was very important at the time because it was new nobody knew about automated elections and that's when my marketing kicked in i said you know people go to the malls and in the provinces people go to public markets that is where we should be. That's where we should bring the. Um, that's where we should bring the voting boxes, so that people get to see it for the first time and realize it's just pressing and it's not really very difficult. So I was able to call the owners of malls here uh, in some parts of um, Batangas, Baguio, definitely Metro Manila, and we actually brought the um, the Picos machine. It's called the Picos yeah. machine at the time. Right. We brought the Picos machines there. We asked Smartmatic to give us mock ballots, and we were really conducting mock ballots there. And you are going to see how civic-minded Filipinos are. Like, they would stop from their shopping, line up to be able to get a voting, to be able to ballot, uh, to get a ballot, and actually to simulate the whole voting experience. Um, we also did very, very exciting things. This is, not that you know this, you're a marketeer also. So we yes. were able to tie up we, we we were figuring where pakaya can we put videos of i know videos of um of the process because we made a four minute video so we were able to tie up with the roros with the, right, right. the roros that traverse and when, we they played, played, uh, when they yes, play the when they play the and the even with video. pal so pal allowed us to play um during the elections the first automated elections if you fly domestic you would see the ppcrv um the ppcrv video um video teaching you how to vote so we did that then um the next step after that was finding computers because we were supposed to do the verification the quick count now that was a little tough um we went to different schools we were asking schools to give us their old computers um but since they were old those computers broke down um and uh, a donor came in but uh, this was one of i think the most stressful moments in my in my life um, a donor came in, everything was set up. We were going to launch the next day because it was elections the next day. And that particular donor decided to pull out uh, last oh minute. My. I won't tell yeah. you who, but oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. I thought the world was crashing around. I said, oh my goodness, what is this? But I when think I have an idea. <laughs> what is the mention? Okay. <laughs> when the door shuts, another, yes. another door always opens. opens. I, I right. believe that God closes something, he opens something bigger. And in this case, we started a beautiful, beautiful partnership with AMA. Um, AMA, yeah. yes, AMA gave yeah. us all the computers that we needed. I asked for 80. They said, you know, you might need more than that. We'll give you 110. Ooh. And then yeah. that, uh, that, 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 that beautiful partnership 
continued already throughout uh, the automated elections. And then, of course, that's when I met you, Nato, because yes. I said, how can people see the vote if we don't have giant screens to show what right. the vote count is? But when mm -hmm. I checked the amount, I said, there's no way we can raise funds for that. It was difficult enough mm -hmm. to raise money for our volunteers' food. What more for screens? And that's when mm -hmm. I went to Globaltronics, Nato, and that's when I met yes. you. I went knocking on your Mr. door. Mr. William. <laughs> and Mr. Guido, no, Mr. Yes, William, yes. thank you so much. Very I generous. And I said, you know, we have nothing to offer you except um, except the knowledge that this is going to do the country good, that it will add a layer of transparency that was never seen before. And I was very happy that the first ever um, electronic vote was read in the PPCRB Command Center. So that's the, it all came to place because of a lot of wonderful people, a lot yeah. of people working towards common good. And I think it's also a lot of faith. If I can share one more story, Nata, this is my faith sure, story. Sure, sure. This is my faith story. I have many faith stories at BPCRB, but this is one that is for the books. Um, I remember we had around 300 people in the command center at the time. And people come in from all walks of life. We have even some people who come in without shoes, you know, but they want to do their civic duty and they want to volunteer. So um, you have different people. You have people from the villages, then you have people coming in, as I said, without shoes, the most humble people. We welcome everybody. As long as they don't have any partisan affiliations, we welcome them to come and to tabulate. Um, we had 300 people at the time when our secretary, Alice, came to me and said, Anna, are there food plans for today? And I remember that was around 10 o'clock in the morning, so lunch would have been in two hours. I said, no, um, nobody told me that we needed to get sponsors for today, so why don't you just um, go check Petty Cash and see what, what's there and just get you know a packed meal that's not so expensive for 300. She comes back and tells me, ah, we have 3,000 pesos in Petty Cash. I said, what? Okay. I said, you know. For 300 people, uh. Yes, 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 yes. I said, if we had more, if I had had more time, I, I would have been able to knock on doors and ask for meals for 300 people, but I had two hours. And I remember I went to my mother again, and I said, mom, we have no food for 300 people. We have no petty cash. What do you want me to do? Same old, same old. She goes, hi, Anna, that's such a little problem. Fix it. I said, what do you mean fix it? It's two hours from now. She two said, hours. yeah. I said, uh, she said, Anna, you have such little faith. Go. That's all. And she had, she was not bothered at all. She was not worried that there would be food. Well, I was really freaking out, Nato. So I was thinking, what do I do at this late hour? So I figured we had around 60 or 70 media, media men there with cameras, with microphones. So 300 plus 60. Yeah. So I said, you know what? I'm going to go up there. So I went up and I remember they were so surprised because usually I give all my uh, I give all my reporting from the floor. This time I went up to the media floor on the second floor. I said, I need your help. Um, can you please um, shoot me? Mananawagan ako. I, this is exactly what I told them. Mananawagan po ako. Kasi wala kaming pagkaran. <laughs> so I, went, I really went on air. I said, we're here. And you here asked for sponsors. Here working for all of you and we would appreciate any food you can send because uh the volunteers are hungry but only if you want and i was praying like anything oh mm -hmm. my goodness nato we had the best meal ever food was coming fish and co i am so grateful to fish and co they sent us some they sent us packed meals good for like more than 300 people we even got bubble gum from wrigley's i mean people were wow. just sending things from left and right that's why I tell you, Filipinos are basically good. People are basically generous. You just have to give them the avenue and you just have to be able to reach out to them. And people will open up their resources as long as they believe that you're doing good. Yeah. So that's my faith story. And then I remember talking to mom and she said, I told you, have faith. So faith. <laughs> Grabe, no? So, um, I know you have a uh, limited time and I just I just I just want to give more time and hopefully maybe in the next seasons 
we will invite you again. I'd like to thank you for sharing your faith journey. And, uh, and then later we'll have um, Ambassador Divilia with us as well. Yeah. So with that, I'd like to, grabe no, ang ikse. With that, I'd like to thank you. I mean, I have been part also of that faith journey. In fact, thank you, uh, with the generosity of my former boss, si William. Thank William. You, so, William. Yes. Um, you know what he does? yung excess of what we have sa LEDs, um, because it's not all filled up, it's not 100% filled up. What he does is, he, like, he likes going like typing. So he gets, oh, you give this portion to to everybody, to PPCRB, World, WWF, Red Cross, etc. Yeah. So that's what we did. That's just what we did. And, and you know, that also changed the course of history. <laughs> he did. Actually, yes. He's one of those beautiful, wonderful people that I told you about. There are so many good Filipinos who just yeah. need an avenue. And he was one of them. And you know, Nato, he didn't make it hard. I went to exactly. I went to him. I showed him our story. He didn't even ask questions. He said, how can I help? And then he even gave us billboards um, along busy thoroughfares, not yes, just inside, right. not inside the command center. So, Mr. William Guido, if you are listening, thank you, yeah. thank you from the bottom of my heart. I'm so grateful. You are one of the angels of PPE series. Yeah, I think we have a charity concert tonight, so I'll also be watching that later. I think so, I'll talk Anna, about it. I'll look yeah, at it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, Anna, uh, we have such little time. We'd like to thank you for coming over and joining us in uh, the family business here thank on you. the new channel. I hope we can invite you some more. Maybe sure, we'll discuss your you. future plans. <laughs> what are you doing now? So stuff like that. So anyway, I'd like to thank you uh, on behalf of uh, the family business with Nato Agbayani. Thank you for joining us in our show. And see you soon. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, Nato. Merry Christmas, Anna. Great to see you again. Great thank to see you. you. Okay. You. So ladies and gentlemen, uh, uh, our viewers, that was Miss Anna de Villa Singson. Uh, and later we will be joined by Ambassador Ita de Villa uh, for some short interview as well. So we go right into a break right now. And again, Anna, thank you so much for joining the show. All right, we'll have a break, short break right now. Thank you. Welcome back to The Family Business with Nato Agbayani. Uh, you're still with us here on TNC. Please don't forget to watch the other shows of TNC. You can visit the, our YouTube and Facebook page, TNC Now.
All right, welcome back to the family business. Um, today we have uh, uh, we later uh, we will have uh, Ambassador Tita De Villa, Henrietta Tita De Villa. She is the chairperson, the former chairperson of PPCRB. So we did a pre-recording because uh, apparently she has a mass to attend to today. So what we'll do is uh, we'll play this video. We had a short interview earlier on and she sent us these videos and later we will react to the videos. All right, so um, can we have uh, Ambassador Tita Di Villa? Of course, we asked her several questions and of course, one of the uh, our first question is how she is uh, in this pandemic and how she's adjusting to the new norm. So, all right. Can we play this video? Thank you. Hi. Hi. Oh, it's so good to see you, even if online only. Thank God for digital technology. And I'm so happy to be on the uh, family business on TNC on your new program. Congrats to your new program. Pardon really that I can't uh, join you in live streaming because um, Saturday, my husband and I attend our live mass, in-person mass, which is about to start in a while. But my Anna is there with you and she's better than her mother. I'm involved in many organizations. I have this uh, Mother Butler Guild. You know, we're now... 35,000 women nationwide. What we do are we're actually housekeepers of the Lord. We take care of the sacristy. We prepare the altar for mass. But since there's no mass and churches are closed, what we do, we have shifted from the altar to the peripheries. We take care of Jesus in the poor in the peripheries. And I was telling my mother, my mother butlers, since... Uh, we have to do this, the synodal way of Pope Francis. That means to say walking together, but we can't walk together because of the pandemic. So we communicate more often with each other. I, I write my mother Butler's love memos almost twice a month, and they answer back telling me what they do and how they have adjusted uh, from sewing church vestments and linens. They now sew face masks and give this to garbage collectors. They cook food for frontliners. Ah, how the Holy Spirit inspires us to, to change gear immediately. Nato, we met through PPCRV, isn't it? So many years ago. And uh, PPCRV I organized in 1991 uh, as directed, as mandated by Cardinal Jaime Sin and inspired by Heidi Yora, now both of happy memory. PPCRB was meant to mobilize Filipinos, especially the voters, to come together to fight against the three Gs, guns, goons, gold, that threatened to dominate the 1992 presidential elections the synchronized national and local polls, the first after the dictatorship. And uh, I remember we were a band of ordinary church workers in the parishes. We had no previous uh, political experience, no big business to back us up, but only the strong faith in God for whom nothing is impossible. Wow, how this uh, COVID-19 pandemic has, has changed our lives. Fast and furious changes imposed on us. You know, when, uh, when lockdown last March 16 happened, I, I didn't know, I didn't know what was happening. Suddenly, we were restricted to stay at home uh, we couldn't go out, especially us seniors. Parabagang house arrest. And then so many distressing news going around. And then there is this quarantine. May MECQ, merong ECQ, merong MCQ. So confusing. But most of all, the reality of loss. Loss of the of human contact 
of socializing with friends and family and relatives and co-workers and then also uh, loss of uh, the freedom to travel most horrifying of all the loss of so many many lives that for a while i i was at a loss but then god is good god is so good my faith in him he used as a as a, a grip on my life so that at about the end of april it was business as usual in an unusual pandemic time and i was restarted on my lifelong journey of yes to god yes to family yes to people especially the poor how ppcrv moved from from struggle to struggle struggling to to convince people to join us and then struggle to to raise funds from struggle to struggle until we became a national movement a citizens movement nationwide from strength to strength to strength and then uh, by then volunteers came pouring in and because i am a uh, a simple housewife and mother family support was very vital for me so there came my anna uh, with her excellent communication and uh, te technology skills she volunteered to be ppcrv's communication director not that she's my daughter but oh she did a good job and then my other daughter Jeannie for the automated election system, the AES, she volunteered to become the education co-director, focusing on the youth and the poor. And then of course, I had my eldest daughter, Maricor, who managed our Facebook account for uh, 2016 elections. And you know, we had more than a million hits. Thank you, Ambassador Tita Diviria. Um, after this break, we'll be right back. We have uh, two more videos with uh, uh, our good Ambassador Tita Diviria. So we'll go right into a break right now and see you later. Welcome back to the family business with Nato Agbayani. Earlier we had Miss um, Anna Divilia Singson, and just a while ago we had uh, Ambassador Henrietta Tita Divilia with us. Now we bring her back for her message on um, her inspirational message for all the families in business and all the families uh, across the Philippines. Let's play this video. Thank you. Hi, Nato. 
na to. 25 years I served as a servant leader of TTCRV, the Parish Pastoral Council for Responsible Voting. I retired after the 2016 national and local elections. But oh, it, it was such a consolation for me that for that last election, we gathered, PPCRV was able to mobilize close to 1 million ID-bearing uh, volunteers nationwide for voters' education, poll watching, conducting the unofficial parallel count of election returns. Filipino volunteerism at its finest hour. So now, I'm on retirement. But whoever retires from life, no, no, never, never. So that even with my myasthenia gravis shutting down my right eye almost permanently, I still go on because life goes on. As Pope John Paul II said, I will stop all, I will stop working only when the Lord puts me to sleep. Now, I organized the uh, Talitakumi uh, Philippines Foundation Inc. Seeking uh, young girls, young girls from highly traumatized uh, backgrounds, kids of uh, EJK victim families, kids from uh, strictly impoverished situations like uh, kids of uh, poor prisoners and those living in utter squalor. But then, Nato, that is another episode for the family business on TNC with Nato Agbayani. What do I think the country's priority should be until 2022 and beyond? I believe, I really believe that the country's priority, both for the private and public sectors, especially for Filipino families, is to go back to the basics, go back to the basics, the source of our Filipino identity. Faith in God, hope that always begins, love that reaches out into becoming proactive service. That we don't just pray and remember God when disaster hits us, but that we keep alive and active our response, our our relationship with God on a daily basis. That no matter how daunting our fall or the challenges that confront us, hope activates our energy level to begin anew, to begin even from scratch. And that love of God and neighbor should always urge us to look at others as our sisters and brothers, our family, especially the least, the last, and the lost. And for elections 2022, please choose wisely, choose your candidates wisely, and vote responsibly. Tandaan po nating lahat, ang bumoto ng wasto ay tungkuling kristyano at dangal ng Pilipino. What can I say to the Filipino families to lift them up during this pandemic time? A short recall. I remember in 1996 when I presented my credentials to Pope John Paul II, now a saint, my credentials as the first Filipino woman ambassador to the Vatican or the Holy See, among many other things the Pope told me, I remember this distinctly. Holding my hands in both his hands, he said, Henrietta, do you know how God loves the Philippines? He has blessed the Filipino with two gifts, two gifts that have been taken away from other countries the strength of your faith and the closeness of your families. 
tell all the Filipinos, wherever you go, whenever you can, to preserve, promote, and defend these two gifts. And then he added, please tell them never to lose these two gifts. And so, I repeat now, our faith, our family, please God, please God, help us not to lose them. Thank you very much. That was such a wonderful message from uh, Ambassador Tita de Villa. And of course, we'd like to thank Anna for joining us in this show. Um, I feel honored to have been part of the journey of uh, this, this family who has uh, transformed uh, a country uh, with nothing but uh, faith. So with that, um, we would like to give you the word of the day, which we find in Luke. 133 and in the new living translation it says and he will reign over israel forever his kingdom will never end um, with that ladies and gentlemen we'd like to thank you for joining us in this episode of uh, families who have transformed or who have changed the course of history and in fact um, it takes faith um, in families to change the course of history not so not so much that uh, we have so much money but really, if we have faith, we can transform this country into um, what it can be, uh, it, into its highest potential. So we'd like, uh, we'd like to thank everyone for joining us in the Family Business with Nato Aguiani. This is our 17th episode. And next week will be our last episode for season one. And hopefully we will have more seasons in, in the coming uh, days and uh, that we will, you will join us once again. So. If you would like to contact me, uh, you could uh, visit our page at www.premierfamilybusiness.com or you can email me at premierbrandmanagement at gmail or visit my uh, Facebook page, uh, Nato Agbayani, the business advisor page. So with that, we'd like to thank everyone. Um, Ambassador Tita de Villa, Ana de Villa Singson, thank you for joining our show today. God bless everyone. Remember that uh, family business is everybody's business. Thank you and good afternoon.